The problem with doing a fall home and garden tour is you can't do it in August if fall has not arrived. Fall is finally arriving in our garden. The stars at the show, this time if you're in the front yard, are the asters. We have purple asters here in the front. And you can see our pink petunias. And they're still doing well, so we can't ignore them. And we have a little bit of the perennial azuratum that's blooming. And back behind you can see some uh, hydrangeas. And over here, some more purple with little yellow centers for the asters. And I think they're really pretty with the goldenrod pulls out the yellow centers. Now if you see some little red leaves around, those are from the dogwood tree which is right above and he's beginning to turn red. And that's where the red leaves come from. You also see the gold dust or a kuba, it goes by a couple of different names, it's an evergreen shrub. And there is another little volunteer pink aster. But this uh, gold dust keeps its leaves all winter long. I picked up um, chrysanthemums at Home Depot. I think there must have been some damage to the plants. So we got four small ones for $5 and I stuck them in pots around the yard. You'll see little bits of color everywhere as they bloom, which is a nice bargain. And I put them in the pot here with the pencil holly. You can see a few of the dark berries on the holly itself, and the birds will eat those, so they don't show very much and they get eaten. And here is the pathway back towards our backyard. Probably you're noticing the butterfly bush, but the real show here is the hydrangeas. And these are oak leaf hydrangeas starting to get color in their leaves and their blooms are dried but a very beautiful golden color. Don't see any butterflies around, but plenty of butterfly bush. We'll have to cut him back. And as we pull back, you can see the red bud tree starting to turn yellow. The red bud tree turns yellow. The dogwood turns red. There is another one of those gold dust bushes. And here are some chrysanthemums. I did pick up the four pack, the big four pack of, um, I, uh, of chrys chrysanthemums at Home Depot and place those around the yard. They're just fun. And here is my Edgeworthy or Chinese paper bush. My husband is convinced that they're going to bloom any minute. They are setting their buds for blooming in March. They will lose their leaves and you'll see the beautiful blooms just stuck on the end of these sticks. But here's the reason we're filming now. This is the toad lily one of our absolute garden favorites. These are so fun. They bloom every year beginning in early October. And you can see their flowers begin blooming at the tip and work their way down back towards the base of the plant. And the flowers look like little orchids or something. They're just exquisite. But they bloom right at the base of the leaf and you can see how they uh, um, kind of do the wave, starting at the tip and working towards the end as they bloom. And back looking down again towards the back of the yard. And over to our left is the bird bath. You see a little color on the Nandina. bird bath and he's a little work on him he's kind of dribbling but we have autumn fern planted in pots here and the brand new leaves look autumn 
But what I love about them is they keep their evergreens. They keep green all winter long. And I love that in the pots so I don't have to replant. I have something all winter long. And the Nandina berries are beginning to red and the leaves are turning red also. The birds eat the berries so they don't last a terribly long time, but they're fun and the birds enjoy them. They can have a swim and a snack. More Nandina on this side. And as we walk down, you can see some begonias that are still there. And that tall thing is not blooming yet. We'll talk about him in a minute. But there's our begonia. And off to the right, I think. No, he's going to go left. Okay, hubby's going left. Anyway, you can see the yellow from the red bud and that bush in the front with the large leaves. Oh, he's going to go up. So the red bud is the yellow leaf. The red leaf is the dogwood. And the dogwood will continue to get more and more red and the red bud will continue to get more and more yellow. Now he's going to the right. This is the Virginia Sweet Spire. This is what he's going to look like in a couple of weeks. But in the meantime, it's just barely beginning to turn. And up next to the house, the Father Gilla, which will look this color. But for now, it's just barely beginning to turn. Maybe we'll have to come back outside in a couple of weeks and check out the beautiful colors that are coming, but we're still a bit early for fall. These berries, if you see these in your yard, avoid them. These are from, they're very poisonous, from the lily of the valley, but the bugs don't eat them, so they do stick around for a while. Now, here's the hibiscus. The larger leaf is a mop head, I'm sorry, hydrangea, a mop head hydrangea, and back behind it with the smaller leaf is the lace cap hydrangea. You can still see the flowers on there. They're still a pretty warm pink color. And we still have some blooms on this hydrangea. And they start off blue in our soil, and then they turn pink, and now they're turning green. And as the weeks progress, they will turn brown. Um, but you can see them through on a couple of different bushes. And that's why they're so fun in a yard. They, the single flowers, you know, the, those clusters of flowers just last for weeks and weeks on end and change and are really, really pretty. Um, and down tucked underneath here, there's a... Autumn Joy, a Sedum Autumn Joy. He's not getting much sun, so or he would be a little bit livelier. And then you can see the hostas here. Pretty hosta with a nice variegated leaf. Now that bare spot is where I will be planting my foxglove. I do that every fall. I'll plant the foxglove, so I'll have foxglove in the spring. And here is our patio under the hackberry tree. It's a fun place to sit outside and eat in the shade. And again, lots of pots with boxwood. And over here, there's our flocks that were blooming in the summer, and now they have seed heads on top. And a second little patio area with a little dining spot for two in front of our shed. I love the combination of materials, our recycled materials, to give us a fun patio. Now, this area back in here is extremely shady. It's, and it's an area in transition. Every time I have a hosta that can be divided, I divide it and stick it over here. And I'm adding hostas and ferns to create a pretty shade garden. And then over in this area, we are planning, eventually, to add a little pondless waterfall, and it's going to go back in there. Here's a little bit more of the Sedum Autumn Joy. Now, back up to the deck. Again, more boxwood in pots, and these will, all winter long, they'll be out here, and 
doing their little boxwood thing, looking pretty and decorating. Now, this table is not decorated. Those are my foxglove that I have planted, waiting to be set out, sprouting them. We're gonna plant them out later. And then you can see a plant growing over the top. That is the monk's hood or wolfbane or aconite. It goes by a lot of different names. It's very deer resistant. It's going to bloom in a couple of weeks. This is what it's going to look like. It kind of looks like a delphinium or something, very tall and spiky with beautiful color. One of my favorites in early November. And you can see how it looks like it has a little monk's hood over it. So I always call it monk's hood, but Hermione Granger called it wolfbane. And here is coming to the house from the right side. Again, more asters and a chrysanthemum and a coleus that's bullying that poor little pink geranium. There's the front of the house. The window boxes you can see have grown well this summer and more asters. These were the first asters to bloom. They bloom probably beginning in about August, late August or so. And they look a little spent and here's some pink ones. Now, I don't have any pumpkins in my fall decorations at all, but a nice purple chrysanthemum adds that same kind of a feel. And here is my rose bush, and it needs to be cut back, but I don't want to cut it back because I love the little orange rose hips that look so pretty. And this is an azalea that will keep its leaves, but I love that rusty color that it'll have all winter long. And here is a different hydrangea up here. It's um, kind of gotten to be a dusty rose at this point. And another autumn fern and a little wildflower. It's kind of weedy. And this is the crepe myrtle that will not die. He still has a couple of little blooms on him, but he's been cut back completely to the ground twice and just will not give up the ghost. And here are more asters and wild onions that are kind of at the, the downside there, um, but they give some interesting height and variety. And over here, these daisies are Montauk daisies that bloom in the fall. We were waiting for them to bloom also before the tour. And there are my Costco chrysanthemums and more purple and pink asters. You can see they bloomed earlier and they're looking a little spent. Lots of ivy. I probably need to come in here and pull some of that out. It's getting really crazy. This Rose of Sharon continues to bloom. And you can see here some of those dinner plate hydrangeas. I don't happen to have one blooming today. Um, and hibiscus, dinner plate hibiscus, our window box and some roses still blooming. And here we go, up the steps we're gonna go. And this is what greets you is you just if you decide to come up the steps and come into the house. On either side, the urns are potted with greenery and begonias from the spring and I have stuck in some dried magnolia leaves to give it a little bit of a fall um, influence. And here we are walking into the living room. These are some preserved magnolia leaves in this vase, preserved with glycerin that um, I will put a link in the to the video where we preserve the leaves. And around the fall, my touches for fall around the home are pretty subtle. I like to use seed heads, whether it's flowers or grasses or weeds, pretty little seed heads in antique bottles that add a nice fall touch, I think, without being too in your face. Not, you know, 20 pumpkins all over the place. It's, uh, I don't need pumpkins at this point in my life. And down here, this is a fun one. Acorns from a neighbor's tree and the leaves that um, I found in my front yard off of an oak tree. 
and um, I do hot glue the pieces together so you know the caps and the heads kind of fall apart with the acorns and I just hot glue them back together because they look so much cuter with a hat on them. Now into the study we have an arrangement in here that echoes the one on the piano with magnolia leaves and hydrangeas and ornamental grasses. At the end of the video we'll look a little more carefully at the individual arrangements and what's in each one. And here's our library. And not a lot strong happening, but the thing about my house is my colors are very fall colors. And back to the heart of the house, back where the kitchen and dining area are. And I've got some ivy that I'm rooting. And so we might as well decorate with him. And these are just some little faux, I don't know what those are, seeds or something, faux something. Um, fills up the container. Here are hydrangeas, mop head hydrangeas that I've collected for years and they some of them may be as much as six or seven years old. My idea of decorating for in a kitchen, I like to use seasonal produce. You know when people put all of those things on their kitchen countertops I it must be just for the video because you can't cook in a kitchen when it has just fully decorated uh, so I prefer not to even bother to do that on my table there's my produce which is my favorite way butternut squash acorn squash Hubbard squash and again we'll look, come back and look that a little bit more closely later on and in my family room there is some more hydrangeas and some uh, dogwood leaves that I just clipped off the tree and they will dry and that's the original arrangement that I did for in my fall decor video, but uh, we ate the squash. And over here, I had to pick some toad lilies to bring those in because they're so beautiful with a little fennel around them. Now, I picked ones that uh, were not going to be seen. And the one on the left was lying down in the dirt, and I didn't even bother to sweep off the dirt. Maybe I should have, but uh, anyway, there they are. And there are some more magnolia leaves in glycerin that I'm preserving and some more acorns. Now into the bedroom and more magnolia leaves and oak leaves and hydrangeas. This one has just some faux ivy. Um, and I have to use preserved things because that vase has a little hairline crack in it. In the bathroom, weeds in a thrift store copper mule. And back into the bedroom. And it's fun to look out and see the seasons change. That's, to me, part of the beauty of the seasons is being able to look outside and see the leaves change colors. And these windows, particularly the windows on this side of the room, look out. You can see that's the Father Gilla that I showed you the picture of. And you can see the uh, yellow redbud tree. There's our dogwood turning red. And that's the Virginia Sweet Spire, which is going to be a beautiful color. So there will be lots and lots of color out that window. Here's some grass seeds that are kind of magenta colored that I just love in an antique bottle. Now, this is the window in the family room. There's the yellow red bud and the red dogwood. And out this window, there's a green bush back there that's not doing a whole heck of a lot. It's a burning bush. This is what it's gonna look like in a few weeks. And it kind of reminds me of a whomping willow. It's absolutely beautiful. And then the next day, all the leaves fall off. It kind of shakes and all the leaves. Now, I'm going to show you my absolute simplest, foolproof, easy ways that anybody can duplicate. Anybody can go outside and find some grass seeds and stick them in a bottle. If you live anywhere near magnolias, you can get some glycerin and, and preserve them. You can collect leaves and acorn. I hot glue the caps back onto the little heads 
but because they fall apart. And here are some hydrangeas that I've collected for years. Sometimes I'll find, I, I, walking outside the other day, I found a, a hydrangea just sitting in the yard. Now he, these are a few little, uh, probably little lime hydrangeas with the dogwood leaves. Anyone can cut that and stick that in the vase. These are truly weeds. Um, with the house that's being remodeled in the neighborhood and they're kind of neglecting their um, yard as they take care of the house, and that's where the weeds came from. Or getting your produce, putting it, arranging it in a nice, warm, inviting way, that says fall to me. Not just a pumpkin, but the things that we actually do eat. And we love all of these squashes and I love to cook with them. There are some acorns there and some hydrangeas and um, to give it a little green color, some moss. And here's the one from before. These leaves are actually preser preserved with Mod Podge. And I will put a, a link to the videos, the fall videos, where I did these. And here are hydrangeas in the bedroom, the oak leaf hydrangeas. And here are the magnolias with um, some faux berries and some ornamental grasses and some other ornamental berries and seeds and some faux flowers and just another one the very same kind of combination but less in it just the hydrangeas magnolias and the ornamental grasses and then I have some reeds. This one I took the magnolia stems that look like this, preserved them, and then I shoved them, literally shoved them. I insert those stems into a grapevine wreath. They're not hot glued or wired or anything. This wreath happens to be going on a window so I know it's not going to get a lot of wear, but I started by adding just the magnolia leaves. Then I added some oak leaf hydrangea flowers that were dried. And then I added um, some seeds. Now those little white seeds came off of um, something I found at a thrift store. It was a, a grapevine wreath with those seeds on it and a couple more seeds. It looked pretty horrible, but it was only $3, and I thought I liked those seeds. So I added the seeds to give it some white, and then a few little sunflowers. I thought it needed a little bit more, so I added just some oak leaves that the squirrels had left in the yard. And that gave it a little extra color on the sides and on the bottom, gave it a little size and a little color. Now this wreath, this is the wreath that was purchased for three dollars with berries on the front so it's a little bit smaller. This one I did something a little different with. I took an assortment you can see of fresh green magnolia leaves and my preserved magnolia leaves and I actually hot glued this one because I knew it was going to be on the door and I cut off the the bottoms of the leaves so they didn't stick into the middle and then on the front I added a few more leaves just to round things out and some berries and some hydrangeas and some extra grass to make a fun wreath on for the front of the door and um, I think it's very inviting and it's standing up extremely well let me know in the comments how you like to decorate for fall. Thank you for joining us on our tour. Be sure to hit the like button if you've enjoyed it. You know, if you're thinking that you don't have anything this beautiful planted where you live, you need to see this as a challenge. When I was growing up as a child in West Texas, my mother's best friend um, would just stop by the side of the road and pick weeds, take them home, and 
put them in a basket. Now, the advantage she had was she already knew what they would look like dried um, because everything was dead by the end of summer. So take this as a challenge. Just see it as a challenge um, to go out and find something beautiful growing in your area. Just remember that our most creative solutions and the best stories begin with the biggest challenges. See you next time.